skills needed to excel in the global culinary arena. We recognize the uniqueness of each student and the need to develop them, to imbibe in them strong leadership and social values that are celebrated worldwide as uniquely Filipino. Our testament of success are our graduates who now hold high positions in prestigious restaurant and hotel establishments here and abroad. After school, I was offered a job in the office of the president in Malacanang Palace. I was hired as a chef de party. From that time that I graduated in here, I was able to practice what I've learned already in school and then at the same time I was able to share it with a lot of people. First job was that we opened C2, which is the collaboration of CCA and Cravings. Now, we're producing around 60 to 80,000 meals a day. We have launched our cookbook already, the Alba Cookbook. So that would be something I'm really proud of. I have six restaurants now, all doing okay, all doing good. And we're thinking of expanding. If it was about sharing what you gained in school, your knowledge, I would consider myself successful. You will always say, you're going to do better. You're going to do better than this. You're going to do better than that. All of them have one common ingredient, world-class culinary education, courtesy of the Center for Culinary Arts, Manila. At CCA, we understand your dream because we help realize that dream. It only takes three letters to access all continents. CCA, fulfilling culinary dreams. In 23 years, I would say that now is the most exciting time for Filipino chefs, Filipino cuisine, everybody that's involved with hospitality. It's interesting to see how technology is playing a big 
place in the kitchen today. Structured recipes, digitization that is helping our students to be anywhere in the world. Interesting to see how research and development, nutrition, wellness is all playing a major part. So they're now becoming very relevant. Health and different types of diet. Today the chef has to understand more the needs of our customers. So we're developing students, not to be just students, but to really be world-class chefs and give them the opportunities as early as now to work with industry and our industry partners. So therefore, when they graduate, they're very much in line with the demands of today's kitchens, which have changed tremendously. Fundamentals is kind of critical. You have very good fundamentals, let's to better and more efficient kitchen work. Also with fundamental subjects, in my experience, this is where I know who has the instant talent to make it work in the kitchen. And sometimes we would also know who has the passion. Sometimes they may not have that instant talent, but they have that passion. And when you see that passion in the kids or in, with the students, uh, it makes us more passionate about teaching them as well. Sayang yung passion nila if you don't really hone it and you don't really mold them, becoming really good chefs. We do not baby them as much as possible. Maybe some would complain or not, but we treat them as if they were in a real job. We don't care if you're a good cook. I think also what's important in CCA is having a good attitude. Actually, in CCA, we're very proud to say that uh, we don't just teach skills. We also teach young ethics and how to be a professional chef when they work outside. Hindi lang basta skill, we also teach them management how they could manage their staff, how could they manage their resources and their money so that they will not just be line cooks but also they will be managers and also owners of future restaurants. Dito sa CCA, we see that we should be always proud of our Filipino heritage. We always teach them that uh, they should use locally sourced ingredients instead of using something that is not locally available here. We wanted them to be proud of our Filipino food. We'd like to see more Filipino restaurants popping out, coming from graduates of CCA. I'm an alumni, so in terms of seeing the chefs who are co-alumni as well in the field, it makes me very proud to carry the CCA brand because I know that my predecessors and even chefs following or the students or the alumni following me have very good background in terms of kitchen work, in terms of theories, and it's like you have this brand. Na if this brand wouldn't last this long if they were producing students that are not up to par with the kitchen standards today. CCA 24 years in uh, culinary education and in the 24 years we have at least 900 chefs working, we have 300 chefs documented in Manila alone running their own businesses and we have many many chefs over the years opening all over the world so some of the students now are executive chefs, head chefs, they own their own companies, restaurants so it's great to see the journey of the student over the last 20 years from student to entrepreneur, chef and what's also been uh, significant is that seeing students from 20 years ago coming back after their journey to want to teach in CCA. So our faculty, are our family and have gone out there, proven themselves and now want to come back and share to the next generation of young students. So. It's amazing to see the circle and it's very humbling for someone like myself who's put time and effort into students you know, 20 years ago that they want to come back and stand with us to continue that journey of producing the world-class Filipino chef. Good morning and welcome everyone. I hope you are all doing well today. Uh, I am Pervin Puntanilla and I am a member of the CCA Manila faculty. Uh, helping me today is uh, Chef Sandra. 
uh, Pauko. Hi, good morning, Hi, everyone. Hi, Chef Kerwin. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Chef Kerwin and I are both honored and excited to host today's event. And I'm sure equal, uh, all of you are equally excited to uh, listen to what our esteemed um, resource speaker and our commentators have to share. So, as it, ano lang, no? Konting background lang sa amin, Chef Sandra. Uh, we've known each other for a long time already. Uh, actually, we've been working together. We see each other in school and we are really homegrown and homebred talents of CCA. Uh, so, CCA also has a lot of programs, by the way. We have a two-year program. We have short courses. And if ever you're interested in uh, enrolling, uh, we will send a link in the chat box uh, so you guys can see the mga different programs that we offer. And so, Chef Sandra, before we start, uh, I would just like to share an, inter an interesting study with our audience. No? Um, let's kindly show the slide, please. Right, so, uh, this was a study that was done pre-pandemic. Uh, it was around. It was done around 2018, and it was a study by uh, YouGov, which is uh, a UK or it was a company in the UK. And the study um, shows basically. Um, from 25,000 people, from 25,000 respondents, uh, it showed different uh, different countries, 24 countries actually, and it showed that um, the popularity of the different cuisines among the different nations. No, and uh, you will see in the table there that you actually two two things to take note there. The first one is Filipino cuisine ranked so low. So amongst the 24 countries, uh, we are the, at the bottom four of the preferred cuisines. But that's a topic for another uh, discussion. Hopefully we can, discuss, with, with this, we can discuss that with another webinar soon. Uh, but uh, more interesting for me or more interesting for us in Chef Sandra, for me and Chef Sandra was the fact that nine, out of all these countries, we were one of the highest. Uh, in terms of the preference for our own cuisine. So, mm -hmm. we that uh, Filipinos really are passionate about um, our cuisine. And uh, mm -hmm. in our humble opinion, uh, this just goes to show that Filipinos are very passionate and sentimental about our own cuisine. And we have very distinguished speakers and commentators for today. And this webinar aims to provide us with more uh, information and hopefully to empower us even further to you know, uh, ignite that passion and that sentiment. And so actually for today, Chef Sandra, we have almost past 200 uh, guests already. Wow. And okay, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, and I think more are coming. <laughs> <laughs> and so welcome, welcome. Okay, may I remind uh, our audience that uh, in case we reach the mac our maximum capacity for the webinar, which is just 500, you can also watch our live stream on CCA Manila's Facebook page and in YouTube. And please feel free to share with your friends and colleagues in if they're interested. Now, um, for... Our Zoom expectations, I'd like to thank you all for being on time. And just a couple of house rules before we start. Um, may we advise everyone to find a quiet workspace so you can fully enjoy the webinar because uh, I guarantee this will be worth your time. Also, please mute yourselves during the presentation and you may raise your hands to signify your intent to speak. And of course, be respectful at all times. And please hold all your questions or comments until all the presentations are done. Chef Kerwin. Yeah, to add to this, uh, with what Chef Sandra said, uh, kindly use your first and last name in logging into Zoom uh, we, so we can address you uh, with your proper titles uh, if ever uh, you have questions. Uh, use the chat feature if you want to share your thoughts. Uh, kindly just type it in uh, so we can address it as well. Uh, use reactions to show your understanding. So. A good discussion would have very lively um, guests, uh, so we would uh, really appreciate it if you use the reaction buttons no? um, in case you, there you have a very strong reaction uh, to, to the certain topics that we have for today. Um, also, come prepared. So hopefully, you, if you have any questions or if you have any uh, thoughts on our topic today, uh, we would it would be nice if you could share it through our chat box, through our chat box, uh, and then also be seated and uh, be ready to learn. Yeah. 
So to formally start our program, we would like to have everyone's attention for our prayer and the national anthem. Lord, thank you for this day, for the presence of everyone in this call. For once again, we are gathered and given the opportunity to appreciate life and your words. Forgive us for our shortcomings and cleanse our hearts as we learn and live your words and example. Father, bless our endeavors especially today's meeting. May you guide us in our discussions and may you enlighten our minds in every decision that we make. Give us your grace that we may effectively do our parts for your greater glory. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mga kamayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. So we're glad to have all of you today. You know, uh, we're so delighted to have people from all over the world in attendance. And uh, just to mention it quickly, we have the majority of our attendees today are from the public sector. And then, well, actually, no, non-CCA students. And then we have people from the public sector, followed by private sector employees. And then we also have, uh, representing the CCA community, uh, 13.5%. And then we have individual business owners. So um, welcome, everyone. Uh, before we proceed, we have a, a quick poll question for all of you. Coming in shortly. So all question number one, we have two actually for today. So the first one is, how are you feeling today? Please select your, your, the, your, the answer that best describes your, your, what you're feeling today. Me, I'm excited. <laughs> Obviously. I like the fourth one, Chef, I'm hungry. <laughs> but I'm more excited and anxious, actually. <laughs> Yeah, but actually very exciting event nga to. This is a very exciting uh, topic also. So uh, oh, hopefully uh, we can all learn talaga from, from the discussion later. I'm, I'm very sure. excited also, yeah. Mm -mm. Everyone's excited. <laughs> okay. So while we're waiting siguro for the call to end, I would just like to acknowledge the webinar organizers. Uh, thank you for... Uh, putting this together, um, CCA Manila's Office of the Chancellor for Education, see the CCA Alumni Association, and our CCA uh, Learning Resource Center. Salamat sa inyo for making this possible. So, so far, Chef Sands, 55%, they're very excited for uh, for our webinar today. Yung okay. choice ko, yung pang-apat. <laughs> 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 you're hungry. 
Also, 33% are serious. Uh, and I bet, after the presentation, mas maraming magugutom. I'm sure. And hopefully, so when sure. they... Hopefully, when they eat and cook later after, Filipino food yung yung lutuin nila, syempre. Nox, syempre. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Love your own cuisine tayo ngayon. Uh-oh. Right, so maybe we'll give around 10 seconds for everyone to answer before we proceed. Gusto ko yung feeling fabulous. Napaka, ano, napaka... <laughs> Uh, Hollywood <laughs> level, so we're uh, <laughs> feeling fabulous. So actually, yeah, 55%. Talaga, talagang excited. Uh, almost half of the attendees today are really excited and curious. Oh, yeah. kasi yung title palang, de ba? It's very intriguing, mm. and you know, it's gonna, you know, be uh, okay. So what do we have? Oh, right. So. Yeah, to to formally start maybe our our webinar, we would like to um call our chancellor for education uh, on stage on our virtual stage to do an introductory message. Hi, Dr. Luna. Maganda, maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat. Magandang hapon at magandang gabi no? to all our um, guests coming from the different parts of the world. Now, welcome to the CCA webinar series. So we would like to acknowledge our distinguished guest speaker today, Ms. Melanie Narciso. Of course, we have with us as well, our CEO, Ms. Marinella Chichitina. We have our distinguished guest commentators in the persons of Chef Tristan Encarnacion, Chef OJ Thomas, Chef Kim and Jay Prieto. We'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our CCA Advisory Board members. Of course, we have faculty, our staff, students, students from CCA Manila and from our colleagues and friends. Welcome to our webinar series. This webinar series is a project of the CCA Manila's Learning Resource Center. This project aims to share information and create awareness among our audience on the culinary trends relevant to the times. And today we are very fortunate during our maiden run to feature a very well-loved topic and that is remembering Filipino culinary traditions. We are also fortunate to have a very passionate speaker today in the person of Ms. Melanie Narciso. She will be fully introduced to you in a bit. The CCA webinar series shall host webinars monthly and I hope that you can join us for the next one. This will be on October 29. We are celebrating the International Chef's Day. And on that occasion, we are offering a webinar to pay homage to our Filipino chefs, particularly those who are in the international arena. Hope that you can also join us on November 18, 2021, as we launch and kick off our CCA 25th anniversary activities. And the theme for that event shall be, I am a Filipino chef. I want to cook for the world. But in the meantime today, please enjoy our webinar sessions. I'm very happy to see that there are more than 900 uh, participants. Thank you for coming. And I hope that you enjoy what will be shared with you with prof by Professor Narciso. So once again, magandang umaga, magandang hapon, at magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you. Thank you, Doctora. So before I introduce our resource speaker for the day, may I again remind everyone to allow our speaker and commentators to finish their presentations first before asking questions. Your questions will be entertained in the Q&A portion. Okay, so now our resource speaker for today 
is a cum laude graduate of Bachelor of Science in Human Nutrition from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Laguna, and uh, a master's degree holder in Food and Nutritional Sciences from the University of Wisconsin Stout in the United States. Uh, Ms. Melanie Narciso ranked first in the 1998 Nutritionist Dietitian's Licensure Examination. Ms. Melanie is currently finishing her Doctor of Philosophy major in anthropology at the University of Georgia, Franklin College of Arts and Sciences in the United States. So she's joining us today all the way from the US. Please joining, join me in welcoming Ms. Melanie Narciso or Ms. Melai. Hello. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much again for the invitation. And it's really very exciting to see all the interest. You know, having about 900 who registered, this is really, this speaks to us about um, the future of our Filipino cuisine. Now, let me just share my screen so we can start the presentation. Okay, I am disabled to uh, share the screen. Can you see? Uh, yes, Ms. Okay. Nalai. All right. Let us warm up with this question. Are you sentimental? Okay, I want this as interactive as possible. Please type in the chat box. Keep me company all throughout, please. Okay, are you sentimental? Mauna na akong sasagot. Yes. Okay. How about the others? Siguro yung iba pakipot pa, no? In denial. So, answer these questions. Do you, can you throw stuff yung hindi sasama yung loob mo? Oh, you don't have, a, or do you have a bodega full of all these souvenirs, memorabilia from long time ago, from last week? From your, from your date yesterday? Do you cry easily when you listen to songs, when you look at albums, and you don't understand why people do not understand you? Ikaw, alala mo lahat sila, hindi, tapos na. So, are you sentimental? Let me check the chat box very quick. Okay, yes, super. They say Filipinos are sentimental, and I guess a lot of uh, listeners right now are Filipinos, and that will actually be useful for something. Okay, and now why are we talking about being sentimental or sentimentalities? Because I believe there is power in this sentimentality, and we can use it for the conservation of our traditions. And this is what I'm going to propose to you in this presentation, Remembering Traditions, The Sentimental Route to Sustainable Diets. We are not done yet with the adobo controversy, probably. We're not done yet with that question, which is the best adobo, which should, be, which should represent the Filipino adobo in the whole world. But that's not what we're trying to answer here. I'm just asking you, which is the best adobo? Okay, think of all the adobos you have experienced in your life. Okay, type them in the chat box. Okay, adobo with pineapple and banana. And oh, keep, keep typing, guys. Keep me company. Okay, while you're thinking about it, probably so many adobos you like. I personally like the one that you see on the screen. Baboy. Pork with a lot of fat. This doesn't have much fat, no? And I like it with potatoes. And then um, cook dry you know, with, of course, vinegar and soy sauce and bay leaf. That's my adobo. Okay, how about you? There's adobong matanda, adobong baboy, pinatuyong adobong baboy. Okay. Okay, if I ask you why you like this, I'm sure the answer is, kasi masarap, di ba? Siyempre, kakain ka ba namang hindi masarap? But I want you to go deeper into this adobo choice. Bakit ito? Okay? I would guess 
you prefer this adobo because it reminds you of something, somebody, an event. I can say that because I experienced it myself. No, I like adobo, this particular adobo, because it's the one that was cooked or that's cooked by my father a lot. And so it is a reminder of my father. It's a reminder of home. It gives you a comfort of home, especially pag nasa ibang bansa ka, no? especially kapag ka, uh, nagsawa ka na sa pagkain, you always go back to it. Kayo, ganun din ba? Relate? So what I'm trying to say here is we are sentimental beings. That's part of our humanity, lalo na nga Pilipino. And also that Sentimenta, our sentimentality, sentimentality is expressed through food. And so food has sentimental value. Okay? And let me articulate. No, this is something you feel, but let me just articulate what we mean. There is value. You know, it has value of something. Oh, well, sorry. It, it has value because of personal or emotional associations rather than material worth. So, for example, it has it may have nutritional value, but it doesn't have sentimental value. Or it may have sentimental value, but maybe it is the worst of, you know, um, nutritional value. Or pwedeng economic value ay mababa, pero ang lakas naman ng sentimental value. Okay, let me share my the food that has the most sentimental value for me. And I want you to think about these foods that carry a lot of sentimental value for you. What you see on the screen it's aslam baliti. That's what we call the sugar cane in San Fernando, in Baliti, San Fernando, Pampanga. And the tapayans or the, or the clay jars that you see there are uh, clay jars of my grandma in her backyard. She made sugar cane vinegar. Okay? And it has been a tradition in the family. Now, I grew up with this. We have a lot of stories to share about this. We have gifted it to so many people. We use it for so many things, including, I won't say that anymore. Okay, but you know, most importantly, it is important because I, I was born because of this. My mother and father met because of this vinegar. So their marriage has a sour start, so to speak. Okay, so kayo, what food has the most sentimental value? Okay. Hindi ko pa nakikita sa chat, but just keep on typing. Okay, so let me give you a few more examples. And it can be food from the ordinary or the special occasions that we have. Think about birthdays, fiesta, Christmas. Dapat lagi may birthday cake, may lechon, may spaghetti, no? Well, kanya-kanyang tradisyon, kanya-kanyang bahay, but... Hindi completo. With your event is not complete. It doesn't feel good kapag wala ang mga to. Is it because of nutrition, the nutrients? Is it because of the economic value? Probably minsan, no? Pero most of it is sentimental value. Something else there that you can't explain. How about lugaw? During the pandemic in the Philippines, this has become a very controversial food item. Essential ba to? And for many of you, probably it's essential. Because, let me, this is what I think about it. We have associated with it with comfort because probably we have always been served with it during, during rainy days. It made it more soothing, you know, um, when you're sick, your grandma, your mother serve it. And so it's love. In material, you know, expression. How about rice? Kahit anong dami ng kinain mong rice, or sorry, carbohydrate, mag-burger ka, nag-spaghetti ka, you ate so much, at the end of the day, you're not satisfied because it is rice that satisfies you. You have been conditioned to like this. It has been what you associated with survival, with a complete meal. So food has sentimental value. And sentimental value is not just there for nothing. We use it like me. Okay? Think about your own stories, your own examples. In my case, okay, and some people here who have spent their holidays outside the country would be able to relate. I spent a couple of Christmases outside the country and it 
feels different. It doesn't feel like Christmas. And so, syempre, hindi masaya pag ganon, di ba? And so, one time, in, in when, when I uh, spent Christmas with my family in Florida, we made ensaymada. Why ensaymada? Because in the Philippines, we always had it, and then we serve it with chocolating batirol. And then, of course, what makes it more special is we um, bake our own ensaymada. And it was my personal experience to, to make it with my grandma, which made it more special. And so serving it in Florida made it more like Christmas and made it just like more home, like home. And um, another illustration here. Okay, see all these um, beautiful people here in the photo? These are my friends when I was studying for my master's in Wisconsin. We spent a lot of time together. We were eating a lot. And well, you know, but of course, we're not together anymore. So to remember them, to make me feel good, I cook the food that we made before, made together. So para maramdaman mo, nandyan sila. Kayo rin siguro, no? Whenever you miss somebody, you cook something that reminds you of that person. Totoo? Maybe or maybe you have different ways of doing it. Ito yung mga pagkain ginamin, kinain namin dati, oh. That's just one spread of many. Okay, so sentimental value of food, it has its use. And it does a lot of things. For example, it makes the food taste better. Now, look at these fruits here. These are from my grandma's backyard. You know? And I would say these are priceless and they, because they taste better. I mean, of course, no? probably magkahawig naman talaga sila ng lasa no? For, with, the, with the fruits from uh, the palenque. However, this is layered with my memories growing up, climbing the trees. And these are trees, most of them planted when I was young. Okay. And these were planted by my loved ones. And so, mas masarap. Siyempre, makikipagpatayan ako dyan. Okay, so, of course, that's an exaggeration. But you know what I mean. Okay, what else does the food sentimental value does? You tend to savor the food more. Remember this aslambaliti example I mentioned earlier? I brought one bottle in the U.S. for me. And every drop is very important. Why? Kasi isang bote lang, no? And I told you it's so important to me. And minsan naiiyak ako actually with, with the thought na I might not be able to taste it anymore. You know why? Because we're only probably two families left planting sugarcane. And our sugarcane is endangered. So baka wala na next time. So the more it makes me sad. Especially, yun nga, no? It has... So much value to me. And okay, what else does the, does the sentimental value of food bring about in our daily lives? We secure the food. Now, going back to the aslambaliti example, the vinegar, I heard some stories, no? Yung iba, they locked it inside their bedrooms. Bakit? You know, Filipinos, we have extended families, People come in, eat whatever they see, pati yung mga gusto mong itago sana, no? or namnamin mag-isa. Pero, so to, to avoid that, people keep the food. It's the same story with the milagrosa grains that you see here. Milagrosa is a popular variety, traditional rice variety from Pampanga and possibly nearby provinces. And unfortunately, it's not there anymore. I mean, at least in the field site I was uh, studying, in, um, it's not uh, planted anymore. Uh, it's only in the seed bank. So it's sad. So uh, before, uh, when it was still out in circulation, when they had it, people kept it, guarded it with their lives. Now, what else? If you have sentimental value, for your food, then you continue making it, eating it, especially when you're in other countries, no? because it's the thing that will keep you grounded. Like, for example, this calamansi. This calamansi fruit here, this uh, photo was taken by my father. It's, it's the first um, set of fruits, no, harvest from the from the calamansi plant that they, they got from one of the stores in the U.S. And it, this was in, in itself a very exciting event. Kaya, ayan, Kodak moment. Yun. And so they continue 
having calamansi there kasi iba yung nilaga kapag walang calamansi. No? Iba yung sausawan, iba yung bistig, hindi pwede yung lime, hindi pwede yung lemon. Okay, so if you have sentimental value for food, it makes the food taste better. You tend to savor it. You secure it. You continue making or eating it. Doesn't this sound like conservation to you? Tinatago mo, you keep it, you preserve it. Oftentimes, we talk about conservation in terms of inventories, documentation, what have you. But, you know, I mean, those are the bigger programs. No, but it seems like there is something that is happening among communities, among, among people. And, you know, it's something that we could like learn from. It's something that we could utilize. And why is that? Why do we have to, why do we have to um, put so much importance? Now, what, why do we have to um, um, utilize this concept? Because we are losing our traditional food. It's either we are losing our biological resources or our cultural resources or both. Okay, biological resources including plants, animals, fungi, microorganisms, cultural resources like local knowledge and skills, tools, beliefs, values. If you lose one, you may lose the other. That's the problem there. Okay, that's why we lose both. Okay. Uh, now, let me give you some examples. What are we losing? Kilala pa ba ninyo ang mga to? Meron ba kayong naaalala? These are examples of our traditional rice varieties. And uh, we are losing a lot of them since the introduction of modern rice. Some may be familiar, like pirurutong, no? Because this was what was used for making puto bumbong before. That's, that is why it's colored violet, no? But of course, the puto bumbong now is violet just because of food color. Now, we are losing a lot of this because ang bagal nilang lumaki sa field, no? Na, naiinip ang mga farmers, no? It, it, does, it doesn't give like a very promising feeling. And if they do not plant those, pwedeng mawala din yung ibang mga pagkain. Duman, for example. Duman, is it familiar? This is a product that we actually have in Pampanga, but very popular is the one from Santa Rita. The closest food item that I would say is like Duman is pinipig, but it's not exactly that. Duman is more tedious to prepare. It is very expensive. So this is what you see in the photo. It is green because it is immature rice. Okay, now the rice that is used for making this, particularly for Sandarita folks, it is red lakatan or lakatan maluto. That too, a traditional variety is slow maturing and it has quite tedious management practices too in the field. And so mga farmers hindi rin na masyadong tinatanim, konti na lang. Pareho, konti na lang ang nagtatanim noon at konti na lang ang gumagawa ng duman. Okay. The other problem why there are not much people making duman other than matrabaho siya. No? Nagpupuyatan ng mga tao dahil ginagawa yan. Eh. And it's physical as well because they beat the rice. No? Now, the other problem with duman making is they don't have the materials, the tools anymore. No? Meron sila yung pang, pang uh, what do you call this, pang beat ng stalks, no? yung pang dry. So it's uh, specialized equipment. Now, the problem with banishing food what complicates it, complicates it is we have some fakery going on na akala natin yun, na pa, yun yung pagkain na like for example duman for example this uh, picture here on the right okay this is sold in one of the flea markets in Pampanga and they say it's duman they sell it for 100 or 150 pesos this small amount no kasi syempre ginagaya nilang duman mahal ang duman Okay, does it look the same? Hindi masyado, no? The color is very bright or intensified and then the, the, the taste, it tasted so much like vanilla. Not really the taste of Duman. But the problem is it passes as Duman. So we are with the illusion that we are not losing it kasi pumapasa siya sa tao, eh. binibili siya. It's a problem. Now, those are just a few examples of vanishing food. 
So what am I trying to tell you here? That we have our sentimentalities and that because of that, food has sentimental value. And because food has sentimental value, we tend to conserve, I mean, if we have sentimental value for food, we tend to conserve it. And if we do that, we are already contributing, no, in part or completely to sustainable diets. Now, uh, just a little introduction, sustainable diets are diets good for you, good for people, good for the planet, such that because they're good for both, we can have more of this food for the next generations. Hindi sila mauubusan. And hindi sila uh, mauubusan ng good food. Hindi lang yung laman chan. Now, this framework that I'm showing right now is from the FAO who made a call for sustainable diets. And you would note there are so many petals here that contribute to sustainable diets. And if we are conserving our food, through, for example, sentimental value, we may already be covering the petal here for cultural heritage or skills and then biodiversity as well. So if you are advocates of nutrition, of um, our ecosystem, fair trade, health, you're already contributing much more to contribute to sustainable diets. So it is promising, right? I mean, you're just going to enjoy your food, your traditional diets, diets that, you, that were there from long time ago. You have this extens extensive pleasure of eating, and yet you are eating sustainable diets. Now, how? That's the next question. How do we actually remember our traditions using this or utilizing this sentimental route that I'm proposing? Let me just first compare it to one of the major, I mean, let, let me just compare like the major uh, ways of conserving with what I am trying to propose here. Okay, in anthropological terms, there's what you call inscription. It's a way to remember. And uh, the equivalent in our society would be documentation. Now you write things down. For example, you go to field and then you write down the recipes, you write down the, the practices. Okay. Of course, this is good. Okay. This is good to start with, but that should just be the start because it has limitations. Will people read it? Will people have access to it? And tell me, you probably had your own experience of following a recipe that you have not tasted before. How easy is that? And you expect people to, you know, recreate these recipes from written stuff. Sensory memory is something that may be more useful. And that is something we could get more through the approach, which is incorporation, again, in anthropological terms. And this is what I'm trying to do here in this photo. I'm in the field in Tandaba, Pampanga, smelling the buro that I made. Buro is fermented fish, fermented with rice and salt. Okay, so I'm smelling it. And of course, um, to, to um, do an approach like incorporation, it can be not just smelling it, tasting it, but it can be cooking it, it can be roasting it. All these things that give you a closer connection with the food. Now, we are trying to use a lot of senses here for you to remember. And I'm sure you've heard that before, no? In when you're told to how to memorize things, the more senses you use, the better. The same is true here. And why do we use this approach? Because sentimental value is developed through time when we become intimate with the food. So... Through time, we ingest, ingest, consume the food, consume the smell, the taste, the textures. We became intimate. We get connected such that the food becomes us. And we people, our memory actually lodges into the food. Siguro madaling maintindihan na yung memory natin puno-puno ng pagkain. No? Kasi lagi naman, di ba? Lagi tayong gutom, lagi tayong nag-iisip na pagkain. That's not hard to think of. Pero... Food carrying memories. Example na tayo. Okay. There was this story that my friend shared with me. He's an anthropologist as well. And then he said one time in a party, 
he was um, eating with all these grade school or middle school children because he was teaching them. He was eating. Suddenly, one bite made him cry. Oh, not cry, by the way. As in hagulgol, no? Why? Because the taste of the food reminded him of a very good friend who passed away and who made that food before. So I'm trying to point out here that food carries memories. That's why it's very potent. We can use it. Now, how do we create the sentimental value? Okay, we reconnect. Okay, we have to have intimate relationships with food. If you don't love food, you have to love it. Not love it to eat a lot, but love it to savor it. Love it to, to reflect more about it. Okay, so love it enough so that you would do, for example, these things. Okay, we have to provide opportunities maybe for us or for others, our family members, friends, for them to interact with biological or cultural resources, local knowledge ex experts. Kasi kahit na nandyan yung mga biological resources natin, well, that's good. No? We could innovate, we could experiment with it. But if you're talking about traditions, well, maybe, I mean, I guess it's the local knowledge experts knowledge that you can really count on. So in this example, the, the pictures, we are trying to educate our younger relatives, no? Uh, because what I was actually making chocolate in Baterol in, in Pampanga, but they didn't like it, no? And nasama ng lob ko kasi favorite ko to, no? I grew up with this tradition. And they were just happy drinking the sugary chocolate drinks that are not chocolate at all. So I wanted to educate them. So we made this chocolate, pero hindi umubra, ayaw nila. I mean, uh, I cook it for them because our chocolate batirol, chocolating batirol is made by grinding the cacao and then using the paste uh, to, uh, to mix with milk and to froth it. Of course, we, we have to cook it. Ayaw nila. So we made them experience the whole process from the roasting of the cacao to the shelling of the beans to the winnowing. And you know what? They started liking it. Of course, after repeated connections. And I didn't stop there. I actually uh, wanted them to also have an appreciation for the cacao itself. So to do that, I gave a taste education, parang sensory evaluation of uh, chocolate, different kinds of chocolate, comparing it with the cacao nib. So that they would know like how sugary, how far the, the chocolates they're eating from the cacao. And hopefully in the future, they would have more appreciation for the cacao. So it's repeated connection and it did work. But of course, these things won't work if we don't have material continuity. So that's something we have to facilitate. No? Are the plants still planted? Do we have the seeds? Okay. Do we have the tools? And of course, we have to support the local experts and the training of apprentices. No, we have to be very supportive. Okay. Now, First, this is an invitation to, to do likewise. No, don't take my word for it. Try it and see if it works. It's just that it takes so much investment of time and resources. That's why I'm telling you, it takes so much love, sentimental value for food. Okay. So if your relationship with food is ka laman chan lang, no, think about it. No, maybe that's the reason also why you're getting heavier, no? Kasi laman chan lang siya, no. Maybe you need more extensive pleasure of eating so that you savor it more so that maybe you won't get, you won't get so hungry and you won't eat so much. Okay? Well, that's a different topic. Okay, now, some of you are doing this already though. Okay? And maybe you're looking for another challenge. So I am actually bringing one right now. I mean, may baon ako. Okay, what is that challenge? We are racing against time. We are losing a lot of our traditions. And a lot of it also is because we are losing a lot of our culture betters. And so this is a challenge for a lot of us. And I know a lot of people listening here are chefs, culinary experts of different kinds, restaurateurs, serious foodies. So I would suggest that we start reconstructing our own 
culinary arts, ethno culinary arts and gastronomy, our own. Okay, we want culture betters. Okay, paano tayo magkaka culture betters? Kung wala tayo nung knowledge. Of course, some of you are starting already to, to, to document stuff, do research. That's great, but we want more. We need more. Okay? And when I say culture betters, I'm not saying you're the only authority. There, culture, food culture is so complex. You can't carry it all in your head, in your body. We need to share it. I mean, that's the essence of culture, right? So just a precautionary thing. You're not the only authority if you're going to take on the responsibility and challenge of being a culture better. Now, I said we reconstruct our Philippine culinary arts because we don't know much. And this is something problematic. No? We're trying to promote our Philippine culinary arts, and yet we're working within foreign frameworks. Well, think about it. No, um, If we're Think um, if we study and teach culinary terms, pretty much it's French, Western. How about our own? Do we have our own? Do you teach them? So it's time to build up our culinary arts. Now, the thing is, it's not just one culinary arts because we are many cultures, many households. So we just a precautionary thing. Of course, we're not making authorities here. We're just making culture betters here, not authorities. Now, how do we do this? If we want to, if we want to teach, first of all, we have to know something. We have to be apprentices. Now, apprentices because we are doing this a sentimental route. Okay. For example, if you're doing research, don't just go to the field one time, document it. I was telling you earlier about, you know, some, some things about limitations of documentation. I mean, everything has limitations. But so if we know the uh, limitations of documentation, if we want this more on an incorporation kind of level, stay in the field longer, magpabalik-balik kayo, experience it several times. And note, if we are conserving food, don't just think that you are conserving one food item. You are conserving the whole system that holds it together because this food rests on a web of relationships. Merong food na yan kasi because of another person, another place, another thing, a food, a, a plant. Okay, I hope you're getting my point. Okay, and then we have other models to, to, to use, no? especially if you're starting up in teaching in trying to teach uh, ethno-culinary arts. Say, for example, in our department, we do uh, a call per tour in residence type of activity where we invite to the university, not academicians, not professors, but local experts, those who have embodied knowledge of, uh, for example, um, beekeeping, honey making, um, soul food cooking, things that are embodied, things not in the head. Okay. And then there's this thing I've seen somewhere, uh, probably in the U.S. and probably in a hawker center. They actually invite Lola's grandmas to be in restaurants cooking the food of their tradition, uh, cooking traditional food so that they could also make the other people experience it. So we, there are different ways to do it, the sentimental route. That is using our memories and using our bodies you know, to to. To, to develop that sentimental value. Okay, and of course, once we have all these experiences, the embodied, uh, the, the sensory memory, then we can share this also through embodied experiences in restaurants, culinary school, states education, so many different options. Now, if you're serious in doing this, well, I hope you are, there are some concepts that I would wish that you also would consider studying, like, Terms like tradition, which is traditional, because of course you won't really know what to conserve if you don't have a baseline. But is traditional? What is authentic? Is there really authentic? Is there really an authentic recipe? And it follows: Is there a dish that represents the whole country, a whole culture? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a sentimental route. 
a route that conserves our traditions by more of an organic way because it capitalizes on the memories that are embedded in our food or the creation of memories to allow the attachment to our food or food system. It is an invitation for you to explore it, not to take my word for it, experience it. I will leave you with this quotation, which encapsulates what we talked about. It is a quotation from Babadium, a Senegalist forester. He says, in the end, we will conserve only what we love. We will love only what we understand, and we will understand what we are taught. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you, Miss Melanie, for that uh, very inspiring and stimulating talk. Ang galing talaga. And for sharing your time and experiences with us. You know, I really appreciate your insights about the power of sentimental, of the sentimental value of food and you know how to create sentimental value and then i'm actually thinking of doing uh something like that with my children i'll start with the with the cacao beans because uh one of our um commentators today sent us a a, a batch of cacao beans from from laguna and i haven't been able to put them to use but now i think i'm gonna do that soon so and i'm pretty sure everyone here felt the same na ano, na and i've never been more excited in rediscovering and exploring our food culture and even pursuing learning more about our cuisine so thanks again for a truly memorable experience sana chef sandra yung cacao nibs mo makaabot ng marikina Ah, sige, Chef, I'll send you some. Kasi ang dami talaga eh, ang dami. And uh, some of the BOD members, well, si Enrico is in Canada, so hindi ko naman mapapadala. So I have a lot here at home. Yan, yeah, yay! Yeah. So excited na ako. <laughs> anyway, now, uh, let me introduce to you our guest commentators for today. We have four. So first, uh, we have Chef OJ Gomez. He's a member of uh, the CCAA Board of Directors. He's an organic farmer and uh, an entrepreneur. And then we also have Chef Tristan Encarnacion. I'm pretty sure you all know who he is. <laughs> He's currently the executive chef of Waterfront Airport Hotel and Casino in Cebu. And of course, we have Chefs Kim and Jay Prieto coming all the way from Australia. So we're really glad you can make it here today. They are the owners of Lolo and Lola, and they are based in Canberra, Australia. Of course, there's also Chef Kerwin who will be, you know, uh, speaking with them, sharing their insights as well. So, uh, to get the conversation going, share ko lang yung experience ko because well, after I heard Miss Melite speak, ano talaga, I was really, I really got emotional. Alam mo yung parang ano, na nabuksan yung mata ko. And all these, hindi nga talaga, all these emotions started flowing in because growing up, I was never really, ano, um, um, concerned about Filipino cuisine. Hindi ko siya yeah. pinapansin. And the only time I got to appreciate was when I went abroad. Yun lang. And I would remember, the only memory recollection I have growing up was uh, our our cook. You know, every Saturday she would make a, a big batch of uh, adobo sa puti. Para that, that would be my meal for the entire week. Yun lang. But the thing is, I never complained. Ewa ko, Chef. So, yon Favorite ko, adobo. But I would never... Pero I don't like my adobo. I would always um, prefer someone else's adobo. Medyo weird. Pero ganun ako. Ikaw, Chef. Do, do, what's your favorite ano, Filipino food? It's been asked a million times. Pero tatanungin ko na rin. Actually, yeah, um, with, with Filipino food, actually very connected to what Mela said. Eh. Most of the answers that we really get, uh, it's really, it really stems from memory, from from sentimental value. And 
my favorite food is the one that we usually have at New Year. Um, there, because in Zamboanga, we have a dish that's called cusido. And what my Lola did was, uh, early morning pa lang at 5 a.m., she would put um, in one, one palayok, she would put maiz, she would put um, beef, chicken, and pork. And she would simmer this from 5 a.m. until 12 a.m. Uh, pag, pag magka fireworks na. No? And you know, that, that food had a very messy flavor, so to speak. But it's not really mm-hmm. the taste per se, but it's it's the memories that we would get to share that one pot uh, during New Year. And I guess essentially, you, that is what makes it really memorable. Eh? Aside from the good food, it's also uh, the memories it brings. Actually, um, just to share also, no, I would a common question that I would get asked is, what makes a great chef? Eh, is it how fast you cook? Is it how good your palate is? I mean, is it how delicious your food is? I would agree, no. Like, all of these are essential skills in making a good uh, chef. But for me, a great chef is able to tell really a story with their food. I mean, with all, uh, we all have food that is very sentimental to us. Uh, we all have certain dishes and food that makes us happy and comforted. Uh, not just because of the taste per se, like what I said earlier, but the memories it carries with it. And I would always tell our students at CCA that uh, our cooking and food is really the vessel for these sentimental memories. Um, it is our moral responsibility, actually, as Filipino culinarians, to be able to share these memories and sentimentalities, sentimentalities with other people, for them to have a connection with these Filipino dishes and ingredients as well. Because if we don't use our cooking to, to you know, to provide these memories to other people, masa stop eh, masa stop yung mga, yung mga these good dishes. They will fade away in memory. So they right. need to, to you know share it with other people. And in short, we should be able to create happy memories and sentiments for other people through our food. And, you know, us at CCA, Chef Sandra knows this as well, Chef Tristan, all our guest speakers and commentators, we don't just hone chefs that can cook for the world, uh, but we try to produce Filipino chefs that can uh, cook for the world. So, yun yung akin, uh, uh, mini takeaway for, for today. Thank you, Chef Curry. Nang galeng, ha? Filipino <laughs> chefs who can cook for the world. Speaking of, may we call on ano, chefs uh, Jay and Kim for your takeaway? Because, you know, uh, they've been um, cooking Filipino food um, since, I don't know, for how many years now with Lolo and Lola. And I'm medyo nahihiya ako <laughs> when I when I found out about them because dito nga sa Manila, I har- well, nakakahiyan, I hardly make Filipino food at home only on special occasions but now maybe baka maiba na to. so Chef Kim and Chef Jay Hi Chef Sandra magandang araw po sa inyo lahat Hello, Hello. So Chef, Chef Kim and Jay if I may ask what made you decide to, to open a Filipino restaurant there? Malaki ba yung community ng Filipinos sa Canberra? Uh, surprisingly, napakalaki po ng um, number of Filipinos um, living here in, in Canberra. Nakaka, nakaka-overwhelm sa dami ng Filipino. Okay. So, Chef, uh, what, what is there a particular cuisine that you specialize in? Or do you do you prepare um, cuisines from different regions? Uh, uh, yung Lolo and Lola kasi, yung restaurant namin is, meron kaming uh, bestseller items which uh, na nag-showcase siya ng mga uh, traditional and authentic Filipino flavors. Tapos, every week we have weekly changing specials that oh. showcase naman yung mga original um, cuisines. cuisines of the Philippines. So every week, nag-change kami, halos half na nang um, change okay. para ma-showcase yung different flavors of the Philippines. Hi, Chef. Is it? Hello. Hello, Chef. Yeah, chef question, Hello, question Chef. lang, Chef. Ano yung mga usual challenges nyo with, uh, with the restaurants in terms of preparing food uh, there. What are the usual challenges and how do you overcome it if ever? Unang-unang challenge ko ay nakaharap namin ng English. Ang English, napakahirap pong mag-English habang di siya pagluluto. Joke lang. <laughs> Joke lang. Um, 
Ano ba? Marami po eh. Um, sources natin sa Australia. As you may know, um, hindi naman po available lahat ng, um, ng kailangan ninyong traditional institution for yeah. um, a certain day. For example, yung papaitan po, mahirap kumanat ng abdo. Oo. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm just Sa mga abat mo, kumanat ng abdo, tapon po agad. So, napakahirap um, magmakaawa sa mga supplier para mabigyan ng abdo. <laughs> Tapos ano, uh, luckily naman, uh, like yung recent project ng Philippine Embassy, talagang tinatry nila na magdala ng mga ingredients from the Philippines to sa Australia. So ngayon din, medyo before nung nakumpita kami, medyo challenging siya. Pero ngayon, like with the recent project of Department of Trade and Industry and the Philippine Embassy, na nadada, nadadala na nila ng paunti yung mga local Filipino ingredients tapos nagiging available na siya sa mga major supermarkets dito sa Australia. So, yun. Isang malaking tulong. So, bawas na sa siya challenge ngayon kasi slowly nagkakaroon na ng availability yung mga Filipino products. That's so good to hear. I think very important talaga yung government support if you really want Filipino goods to really flourish. Uh, importante talaga yung support ng government natin. <laughs> uh, but that's very Opo. good to hear. Yeah. Opo. Nung una po kami, share ko lang po sa inyo ha, nung una po um, tayo sa start dito ng um, uh, food truck dito sa Candera, uh, napakahirap po talaga kasi halos walang nakakaalam ng Filipino food. Tapos, um, mama, mahirap sa uh, mahirap sa tofu, mahirap sa i-introduce sa community kasi wala wala talaga silang idea kung ano po yung yung pagkain natin. Tapos very fortunate din kami na yun nga sabi kanina ni Kim na surprisingly marami ang Filipino community dito sa Australia lalo na dito sa Canberra. Tapos uh, very fortunate kami na ang daming support na nakuha namin nung sa Filipino community para ma-introduce yung Filipino food sa non-Filipino. Opo, tama yun. Kasi yung yung kapwa mo Filipino ay um, they, they alone ay Filipino um, food at that or yung kapwa mo Filipino mismo ang uh, magpapalaganap ng sarili nating pagkain. So, maswerte po talaga tayo na napaka-supportive at napaka-mapagmahal sa sarili natin ng, ng Filipino o Australian community dito sa Canada. Sobrang nakakatuwa naman yung advocacy yung John Chef Kim and Jay. We're very happy to have, you know, uh, chefs uh, such as yourselves that really advocate yung Filipino cuisine, especially in other countries. Because I know it's really hard to do. It's very it's a very risky um, thing to do as well, especially overseas. And talagang saludo kami sa inyo. Saludo kami. Kung mahirap ang bukas ng restaurant, ng Filipino restaurant here in the Philippines, I'm sure it's quite as hard to open a Filipino, a Filipino restaurant in 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 another country. No? So so yun. Saludo talaga kami sa inyo. Salamat happy. po, Chef. Salamat. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Sandra. Kapayo. Naiyakin ako. Okay, maybe we can ano call on Chef pa. Uh, Tristan, ayan, for his takeaway. Chef, may question ako sa'yo. What's that know. one Filipino dish na ayaw mong niluluto but you would rather order from someone else or have someone else cook for you? Oh. Well, ayan, oh, hirap naman ang tanong. Sabi na nga, Abe. <laughs> takeaway mo lang about okay, the sentimental um, value of food. Ayan, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening sa lahat. Of course, uh, Chef uh, Sandra, Chef Berwin. Yan, mga fellow instructors ko yan. Um, ano yung ayaw? Well, basically, pag na-try mo, marami. Marami. I mean, ang hirap na tanong, ha? Hindi <laughs> 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 really talaga hirap. ni Chef Santos. Oh, talagang, sa akin talaga tinapat. <laughs> um, it's, ano kasi, like, ako, tagal ko na sinasabi, I, I don't know if naalala ni Chef Corwin to, when, when we were teaching Filipino cuisine, Akala kasi ng iba, it's it's one of the easiest since yeah. well, diba? but basically and honestly it's really hard to teach Filipino cuisine kasi ang hirap kalabanin yung kinalakihan ng estudyante 
Right. How can you beat Uh-oh. like the adobo of your lola, adobo, di ba? Correct, correct. That's, that's one of the, for me, that's the, actually the hardest. And my takeaway on the, um, dun nga kay Miss Mel, uh, Melay? Melanie? Yeah, Melay, Miss Melay. Yeah. Miss Melay na. Um, while, while watching, nga, I, I, naging emotional ako kasi I think everyone knows naman, di ba may, may, may family kasi is talagang revolves around food. And one of the reasons then of why ako nag-culinary is because alam ko na it will bring us all closer together. Siyempre, pag yung food mo nasa table na as a Filipino tradition and culture, kailangan sabay-sabay kayong kakain. And that time, I, I think sabi ko, siguro this is one of the best way on, on how to bring back I mean, the closeness of family. So, isa yun sa traditions and yun nga, yung value. Kaya nga, while, while, while watching Miss Mela and listening to her, maano ka eh, talagang babalik sa yung memories, matouch ka. The memories, yung kinalakihan mo. And alam naman natin na, di ba, if, if bumalik ka or nakain mo ulit, it, it brings back good memories, basically. Even, ay, mga bad memories kasi naalala ko nun, pag kahit sa kay sa over the food ako pinapagalitan din so ang daming i mean yung basically on how i grew up and don that's why me um here in in waterfront we we share uh we give our most of our food here has story na bakit iting kinreate mo bakit to na re there's a special guest bakit ito yung pinatry mo well because i want them to i want to share ito yung special sa akin eh mm-hmm. Kaya nga pag nakikita ko, nalalaman ko na ako na, this 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 very or special or any other guest. We 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 consider everyone here as VIP. Na try nila mas nasarapan. Well, talagang maano ka, ma, very ano ka, ma appreciate iba yung feeling na makukuha mo. So yun, uh, answering your question chef, ang hirap pa rin. Ito pa rin siya na sagot. <laughs> <laughs> sa chat na lang. <laughs> sa chat na lang. Sa chat. Thank you chef Tristan. You know, we can go on and on about this but you know, limited yung oras natin. Mm-hmm. But thank you for your ano ha, for sharing your story. Next, naiyak ako. Anyway, <laughs> I'd like to call on <laughs> I'd like I'd like to call on our next our next commentator chef OJ Gomez who's coming in live from Naxplana <laughs> <laughs> Chef OJ can you hear us Hello Hi Chef, Hi, chef OJ nice to see you again So chef, ano lang namin, we'd like to get your ano take away from Miss Melai's presentation because I know you everyone here's been feeling, you know, sentimental and emotional after watching her. Ikaw po, what's your ano? What's your takeaway? Um I mean the in a cacao farm sa ano sa ano to? Ah, uh, take So in fact, we're trying to relieve the cacao industry already kasi talaga nakikita namin na malaking potential niya for the farmers, hindi lang po sa farmers, pati po sa ating kulinaryan. Ano na po, ano, ngayon na ang dami natin uy, ano yun, nananalong nag-award award winners ang ating cacao. So, I feel that masyadong ano na nagiging emotional rin ako lalo na pag nakakakita ako na ang daming cacao so it reminds me of my childhood rin kasi we used oh, to make sure. hot chocolate pero with tablia and fresh cow's milk so iba talaga yung yung it brings you back talaga na sabi mo anong and it pushed me naman to pursue yung aking isang passion which is Filipino uh, regional cooking or yung mga cuisine. So I went around uh, the Philippines during my surfing day. Then, nag immerse ako sa mga uh, yan, sa mga pamilya, sa palengke, napunta ako to see what they produce. Tapos, I always ask somebody to cook something for me. Kasi nga, sila lang naman yung makakabigay ng 
ano eh, nung tamang lasa, tamang luto, and iba-iba rin ang ano, ang dami nating cooking, um, mga, tawag dito, cooking ways or methods na Filipino lang talaga. So, I, I'm really inclined in kinilaw. And the three, uh, like the two na three ways, totokil, sugbat, tinola, and kilaw. And then other dishes pa talagang, ano, even the chocolate maroon talagang, um, talagang atin lang po yan. Wala naman sa ibang lugar niyan. Yan, yan yung mga naalala ko. And with Melanie Stock talaga, grabe. It, ano, it, it's reminding me to, you know, pursue whatever it is I started before. So kaya ito, nandito ako ngayon, immersing with farmers with po, cacao farmers, coconut farmers, banana farmers, and see pa paano natin sila matutulungan okay. in terms of marketing, in terms of producing more award-winning cacao beans, yung mga ganun po. So, um, yun lang, yun lang <laughs> kayo masishare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, Chef OJ, thank you also because uh, actually nagbukas sa amin ng, sa CCA's ng third eye namin with the agriculture side with really Dr. Luna and it really showed the importance of, you know, kami sa usually ang chef sa kusina but the agriculture side of it is also very important because you are the ones who really advocate the use of traditional ingredients and, you know, yung mga talagang ingredients sa sariling atin and without your without the efforts of you guys uh, in that agriculture side wala rin tayo magagamit as chefs ng mga local ingredients and if you don't have these local in, local produce local ingredients mag-iiba rin yung lasa ng Filipino cuisine so uh, really we would like yes. to thank you also for your advocacy uh, on the agriculture side of oh oh uh, alam mo tanim ko chef I can't enjoy the new vegetables sa aking garden I don't plant any of the other vegetables na gagaling kung saan. Kasi I believe na talagang ito yung, it, ito yung sagot sa food security. Tama, tama. Pagyamanin natin kung ano meron tayo. Ayun lang kailangan eh, food Totoo sustainability. Yeah, Totoo. So right Totoo. now, ano tayo, very on the verge tayo eh. If we're gonna do something or nothing. Kung wala tayong gagawin, wala, ta- wala lalong mangyayari. Kaya we need to push this. Yun lang po, Chef. Tama, Chef. Tama po. Maraming pong salamat. Thank you, Chef OJ. And to our commentator, Chef Tristan, Chef Jay, Chef Kim, thank you po for all your, for your time and for gracing our webinar. Now, I think um, we can proceed now to the Q&A portion. We've we received a lot of questions in the chat box and so Facebook then. Um, if you wish to to uh, send a question, to ask a question, uh, okay. you may do so. You can send your questions in the, in the chat box or through Facebook. If you're viewing us uh, on Facebook, please state your name, your institution, the name of the guest speaker to whom the question is addressed, and your question. So I would like, I'd like to start off with a question from Ms. Allison. This is directed to Ms. Melai. The question is, do you agree that transformation and adaptation also play important roles in the continuity of a dish? If so, how do you marry the idea of sentimentality with transformation and adaptation? Ms. Melai? Thank you, Chef Sandra. And uh, if I am not mistaken, that must be Miss Alison Ihe. <laughs> Alison, is that you? Anyway, okay. So uh, to answer that question, I, I, I would like to start with a clarification of what tradition is, or even at a broader sense, culture. Okay, when we say traditions, this have been things or practices, food that has been with us for quite some time. Uh, different authors would define it differently. Yung iba, 50 years. I'm still looking for others, no, but um, I, I haven't been very successful. But one thing is key. It has been there for a while. Now, that means it can be old. It can be new. Okay. Um, 
one thing that we have to be careful with when we talk about traditions is not to be not to act like purists and pretend that no change is happening around us we have to adapt to the environment okay that is how our culture grew that is how our traditions came about yung chocolate for example it is our tradition now but before it was not because we didn't have chocolate to start with Okay, so this is then to say that it is okay for things to change. It is okay to improvise, but I, I, I am um, drawing from also a comment given or remark given by Dr. Luna that, of course, we have to strengthen whatever is ours. Um, I'm inspired as well by this concept from heritage uh, conservation uh, principles, wherein it is nice to have layers of, for example, it, whenever they're uh, trying to restore a building, for example, they have layers of um, certain periods in time you know, when they restore it. So, hindi nila papalitan yung lumang luma. Instead, all the different layers of time are there. Okay? And and I guess we can draw inspiration from that. No, um. Probably it's really a hard balancing act, okay? But to have those layers would be good and would be a good start. And I hope I answered your question, Alison. And um, I am expecting really very difficult questions, and this is one of them. But I would like to invite all of us here to think about them, no? And um, and also probably write down your comments. So maybe you have other uh, things, thoughts, suggestions. Hi, Ms. Melay, Chef Kerwin po. Yeah, I also have a question from Ms. Allison. Uh, her question is something like the dichotomy between tradition and modernity. How do you balance the two? Um, I, I was thinking I already answered that. Uh, well, okay, let me just expound then. Mm. Okay, um, modernity. Uh, whenever we're talking about modernity, we're talking about technologies most of the time we're talking about new food ideas and so as i was saying a while ago tradition is not static okay uh, and so we can incorporate these different technologies definitely now uh, let me give you an example probably that would be very useful okay um because the french french cuisine is very popular of course and so it has also um been a subject of many studies and um, it has, of course, a lot of criticisms, particularly on how it has actually um, built its culinary culture or, or culinary arts. So um, it has a very long history, eh, no? um, you, depending on where you want to start, 1600s, 1700s, they started codifying the French cuisine. So you know, I, I'm sure those people taking culinary arts here are familiar with Karem, Escoffier. Okay, so they have been codifying things, sinusulat nila, and these were like the Bible of the chefs. And I guess a lot of this have been carried on until like the newer generations. And the, the criticism here is naging magistatic because of that. So, sino, parang that's also another limitation of documentation. No? Nagiging static, frozen, museumified, museumified, okay? Because you want to keep culture alive. And so, we do not act like purists here. So, we welcome modern changes, changes of modernity, but we have, this is my suggestion, we keep the layers in there of different time periods, different traditions, especially me as a nutritionist. I feel like these different sets of traditions are a reservoir, okay, for, for a resilient kind of living. Kasi, you know, um, darating ang sakuna, darating ang bagyo, etc. COVID pandemic, you always go back to this. It's your toolkit. If kulang yung toolkit mo, it, it, this, will, it, this will give you lesser way, um, strategies to be resilient. Thank you, Ms. Melanie. So we're just waiting for some more questions to um, pour in. Oh, we don't have any questions yet so far. So maybe while we're waiting for some of the questions, maybe we can read some of the comments uh, in the chat box. Um, from uh, Ms. Audrey Dillon, uh, she said, agree we should keep the Filipino food culture regardless of your province or city of origin. 
uh, Miss Francesca Ong, one of her students, uh, sabi niya, same, I'll be exploring different kinds of our Filipino food, then comparing it with others. From Miss Maria Victoria Lucasan, that is also why we are also slowly losing our identity. So bago mag-fusion, strengthen moon our own. Uh, from our very own Ms. Uh, Doctora uh, Veritas Luna, she says, patronize Filipino food so that the chefs and cooks will continue cooking these. I love Filipino food. So, Ms. Melay, I think your the talk that you did earlier, it worked really well. I think marami na inspire uh, to really you know, you. honor yung Filipino food traditions natin and yung uh, food sentimentality. Yan. Baka, you, baka the audience has any more questions for the panel? for our speaker. So, Chef, well, do you have any questions for Ms. Melay? Well, uh, while people are thinking of like possible questions, so maybe I can add a little. Is that Go ahead, okay? Go ahead, Ms. Melay. Yeah, um, well, we are trying to promote our cuisine, right? I mean, yeah. that is something that, uh, of course, we love to, to happen on a Filipino food will be big. Uh, probably a big limitation that we have is our attitude towards our food. No? Uh, yung minsan nahihiya tayo about our food. And siguro that makes sense, no? Kasi um, people have been so into lists, no? So kunwari, bida lagi pag mga listahan ang pinag-uusapan, French, okay? We have developed all this different um, uh, like intangible cultural heritage list, no? And naka-feature doon yung French um, gastronomy, no? And then um, we have also our art, slow food, and so on and so forth. Mahilig tayo dyan. Para siyang naging cultural beauty contest, no? Um, I have issues with those, no? While the intention is really good and it's helping in many ways, one limitation is it becomes exclusive. The same is true, for example, with trying to choose which best, which dish to represent the whole country. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? So it becomes exclusive. And most of the time when we're trying to do that, uh, the, classes come in no kung sino yung powerful sino yung mayaman yung taste niyang lalabas and if we have this framework set how can you know the food from the margins no prosper i mean kaya kinakahiya natin eh kasi feeling natin there's something better no so it's something that we have to be uh, um something we have to embrace no i mean Hayaan na yung mga listahan na yan. Don't be bothered by them. Don't be pressured. Let's just work on our own. Enjoy our own. Right. Kasi to think, I mean, our first clientele is not the people outside the country. The first clientele would be us. And dito na lang sa Pilipinas, ang daming gutom, ang daming walang pagkain. If we want to make our food um, popular, start with you know, making it better, like making it accessible, yung good food. Good food is so expensive. Okay, so we're, we, we have to do it as a system, no? I mean, no person can do it. No one office can do it. We have to have the people, the, the local experts, the, the materials. And, you know, if we... They say, you know, with globalization, um, nagtatalo yung mga ibang kultura kasi others are really very dominant. But here's the other thing. With globalization, we are also challenge because nakakahilo no nasan na yung akin and this is an opportunity for us to dig deeper into our culture and so because people are looking for variety in this time uh, globalization because people are looking for something different we can just embrace our difference yeah. i guess i'll stop there and dami ko na sinabi actually miss nela may isang may isang question din here that i'm very interested on your take on this and actually it's in, <laughs> in line with the times uh miss annabel miss rona are are interested on what is your stand on the dti's initiative to standardize adobo what is your opinion on this do you think it will help um our our globalization or our tradition Okay, I think somehow I've answered that question, no? So I guess it is clear that I am not for the standardization 
Because standardization means like similar to what the codification of the French did, no? It became frozen, no? It did not allow it to grow. Kaya sinasabi nila, some experts are saying that that was the reason of the demise or of the decline of the French cuisine, no? And so it's the same with us. Um, well, whenever we're thinking of this solutions, interventions, we also we always have to go back to the objectives that we have. Ano para saan? Okay, if it is to to promote tourism, uh, well, I guess it could really help bring in the money because, of course, we're dealing with people who are not so educated with culture. No, mm-hmm. unfortunately, sa turista natin puro lang. Unfortunately, we don't get so immersed in the culture. We just like the touristy stuff. No, um, okay, I don't think. I don't think that's my objective. I mean, if we, I want to promote Filipino food, no. If I want to, it, it's big, my objective is more to have sustainable food, no. For us to enjoy our food, for us to to be healthy, and um, that doesn't help much in that regard because it makes it more exclusive rather than inclusive. Okay, and um, so many, so many uh, possible implications there. Okay, but um, for the interest of time, probably I can stop there. Or do you want me to go on? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think it's a very long ano, yeah, topic. Eh, that, uh-huh. That's standardization. I think it's really for another um, webinar. But I hope you can also join us there, siguro. <laughs> if ever we have that, that talk, I think it's going to really be an interesting topic as well. Mm-hmm. I, I have written something on my Facebook page about mm-hmm. uh, it's my comment. But of course, it's just one dimension. Uh, it's just one aspect. Um, it is not uncommon to do this, okay? Um, he, I'm sure they have been, the people behind it has done their job, like trying, um, looking at literature. It's just that with tourism, uh, it's more of that. No? I mean, talaga namang nakatulong. For example, Thai food is out there because it has really done so much promotion, so much standardization, and so it became popular. Pero ang nangyari, Though people only know Thailand for its pad thai, for its tom yam. I mean, is that what we want to happen? For example, yung buro, you know, which I'm studying at the moment. I'm writing my dissertation on it. Um, it's looked down on, no? Pero it is the heritage of our people, no? Lumaki sila, nag-survive sila because of that. And then just because it's stinky, it doesn't meet the aesthetic standards of people, hindi mo na siya tatanggapin. Okay, and you know, um, there are so many studies showing that indeed a lot of cultures, food cultures, have gone up the culinary, uh, have appeared in the culinary map because of severe promotion standardization. But there are implications. We want, I think, we want to be more holistic in our approach. Thank you, Miss Melanie. Uh, I have a question here from uh, Mr. Uh, Pablo Felipe the Fourth addressed again for Miss Mel- Melai. Will standardizing recipes help in promoting and conserving our traditions, or will it challenge this effort? While we want to document heirloom recipes, we have this activity ongoing actually. A drawback is most kapampangan heirloom recipes do not follow measurements. I agree, my aunt is like that. So, how do we marry these two? Okay, uh, let me uh, just uh, see if I got the question correctly. No, so it's about like, well, maybe just repeat the question, please. Okay. It's uh, quite a mouthful. I know. Okay, so will standardizing recipes help in promoting and conserving our traditions, or will it challenge this effort? Uh, while we want to document heirloom recipes, we have this activity ongoing actually. A drawback is most. Kapampangan heirloom recipes do not follow measurements. So how do we marry these two? Okay. Uh, let's say, okay, let's say standardization will help because other people do not know about the dishes anymore. No, uh, That's the sad thing din siguro. No? That's a sad uh, reality that we also have to, to, to recognize that we, are, we have lost a lot already. Okay, marami nang nawala. So I would understand why people will be like trying to reconstruct things or maybe take it to the next level, standardizing it. Pero uh, sa tingin niyo, if we standardize it, will it work? Yun na lang siguro, no? Will it work? 
as you mentioned, no, measurements are not done by people. We are not that. We are people operating on embodied kind of um, what do you call this modes, like driving. No, you know driving because you practice it. It's a body thing. It's not a knowledge thing. Okay, so standardization, like especially as it is expressed in terms of um, recipe books, it's like documentation, no? Yun, parang mahirap siyang i-follow. Okay? Mahirap siyang i-follow. Say, say it will help. Kasi at mm-hmm. some, I wouldn't deny that at some, um, to some extent, probably it would. Pero would it be successful? Right. Mm-hmm. I think Miss Mele, because the keyword then is the word standardization, because I think it's too complicated of a term for some Filipinos. Maybe like I think most of the chefs, uh, the 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 view on this was doing a base is okay, but in like we like with what you said, standardizing everything, it's it's going to be too much. So, mm-hmm. but I definitely I agree. Make, maybe making a base uh, would be good, but to standardize a recipe that would be really restricting us as uh, Filipino mm-hmm. vegetarians. Yeah, and um, I just got reminded of something um, on standardization. Okay, um, this is my um, this is something I'm also thinking about too, no? Because for example, we do have uh, I am into fermented products, and I know that these are alive. No, so if you want to have microbiological diversity in addition to all this, you know, biological diversity that we're trying to, to keep. If you're going to standardize, for example, products, no, ibobote mo kasi, papano yon? You're not, you're not also giving them the liberty to, to diversify because it's a system that is alive, no? So, nag-aano yan, nag-iiba, iba yung microorganisms na nandyan, pumapasok. So, it also changes the flavor. So, we have to respect diversity that is in nature as well. These are, we have to have like a, a deeper appreciation for, for, for nature, I would guess. That's one of the things that we have to respect. Thank you, Ms. Meloy. I think we have a last question, Chef Sands. Oh yeah, so we're running out of time. So our last question is again for uh, Miss Melai or any one of our um, commentators. The question is from Miss Rona: Is opening up a restaurant where we adopt the sentimentally the, the sentimentality of food or its preparation? How do we merge it with current trends and promote it, especially to the millennials? Okay, uh, one of the challenges of having a restaurant is meeting, satisfying the taste of your guest. A lot of times I, I of course, um, do hear about people trying to, to um, change their menus, change their recipes based on, on, on those preferences. No? Kaya whenever you go to different places, for example, kahit fast food na lang, no? iba yung lasa ng McDo dito sa lasa ng McDo sa France, for example, sa Japan. No? So there's that reality because you're a restaurant. You have to earn. Okay? And a lot of the earning would come from customers who are happy. Okay. Unfortunately, customers are not very much you know, open. That's a problem, and that's something we have to work on as well. Now, in my, in my opinion, it is nice to have different offerings such that, so meron kang innovation, for example, pero meron kayong parang, oh, um, if you want to experience, you know, what re- it really is, yung what Filipino food is like, to, to, to be immersed in this culture, to, to be taken there no, through, the men, uh, through, through the food, this is what you can try. Okay, and of course, um, and one of the good things that you could um, mix in there, okay, um, okay, some Filipino foods are not so palatable to other people. That's understandable. Iba yung aesthetics nila, iba yung standards nila. But you know, here is where the stories come in. And um, Chef Tristan mentioned this earlier, that he's serving like storied food. And I would guess he would also attest that if you insert, put in a story in that, it will help with the acceptance of the food. Okay, so 
So um, of course, ako ideally gusto ko talagang you know traditional tayo, no na it's whatever is like very diverse. Um, pero hindi talaga patok yon sa iba. Hindi mo kaya, mm-hmm. hindi mo pwedeng ipili. Mm-hmm. Huwag mong pilitin. But you try to um, meet them where they are and pull them out of it. I guess just like with anything else. Thank you, Miss Mela. Yes, you you did. Thank you very much. You know, really, we really are learning a lot from you. I hope we, this talk could go on and on. Oh, <laughs> Pero, Miss Mela. Diba? <laughs> Galing. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting and relevant. I should Actually, say marami, relevant. Actually, marami pa kami gustong itanong. Even personal questions na kami, <laughs> na lagi ko na iisip. But we don't have personal enough time. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough time, so hopefully now we can have another extension of this talk, maybe some sometime in the future. Um, but yeah, it's it's very parang yung dami na buksan ng third eye ngayong araw na to. Regarding <laughs> Filipino <laughs> cuisine, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I so I guess it's time to proceed to uh, uh, the awarding of certificate of appreciation. May I call on Dr. Luna? <laughs> to award the certificate to our resource speaker and commentators. Dr. Luna, if you can uh, please come to the virtual stage, please. I think Dr. Luna is having some technical difficulties. Uh, we can do okay. it, Chef Sandra. Okay, po. Uh, okay, because Dr. Luna cannot come. Uh, I'd like to award the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Melanie Narciso for her valuable contribution as a resource speaker during the first webinar series on Filipino culinary traditions entitled Remembering Traditions, the Sentimental Route to Sustainable Diets held on September 30, 2021 via Zoom digital platform. Thank you, Ms. Melai. Thank you, Ms. Melai. Thank you so much. Uh, it is my pleasure. I am a student of food, and this goes with it. No, Talking about food is a pleasure. My apologies, Melai. My, my internet is so unstable. So thank you very much for your talk. This morning, it's very stimulating. Marami po kami natutunan, no? particularly yung culinary arts framework and doing the Filipino culinary arts term. So maraming salamat no? sa gracing this event. And then, of Thank course, so we'd also then, like to... We would like to... Um, Award also the Certificate of Appreciation to our chef commentators. Of course, we have Chef Tristan Encarnacion, Chef Kim and Jay Prieto, and likewise, likewise uh, Chef OJ Gomez. So I would like to read the certification or the certificate, I'm sorry. So for his or her valuable contribution as a guest commentator during the first webinar series on Filipino culinary traditions entitled Remembering Traditions and Sentimental Route to Sustainable Diets held on September 30, 2021 via Zoom digital platform. Signed by Chef Sandra Faye T. Pauco, President of the CCA Alumni Association and yours truly, Chancellor for Education, CCA Manila. Maraming salamat po to our chef commentators. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Tristan. Thank you, everyone. Ms. Melay, thank you. Thank you, then. Thank you, Pop. Thank you very much.
Okay. To our, ano, our audience, uh, just a quick reminder, you may get your uh, certificate of participation by confirming your attendance and accomplishing the evaluation form, the link of which can be found in the chat box. And you have until October 1, 12 noon to submit the form. And you may expect, the, you may expect your e-certification of participation in seven working days. So don't forget to fill out the form, everyone. Chef Kerwin? Yes, yeah, so for our closing remarks, we would like to invite our beloved um, CEO of uh, the Center for Culinary Arts Manila, Marinella G. Trinidad. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Chef Kerwin. Hello. So good morning to the CCA Manila community. I would like to thank Ms. Melanie Narciso for bringing new life to our cuisine and for highlighting the importance of conserving its tradition. I couldn't agree more that um, the memory is so closely related to food. In fact, my comfort food is the adobo. My favorite as adobo is the one is the recipe of my lola that's cooked by my mom. It's very garlicky. It's somewhat dry. It's made of um, chicken, pork, and beef, and um, it's slow cooked, less soy but more vinegar. But more than the ingredients of this dish, what really is um, for me is the memory that goes with it because I would remember my. Lola cooking a big pot of this adobo and then packing them in the selecta cans for us to take home every Sunday. So um, it is with this um, webinar that made me nostalgic and reminded me that as a culinary school, we have such a big role to play in conserving what we love, which is our own cuisine. I would also like to thank um, Dr. Luna um, for organizing this, our chancellor. For it's such a big role to play in conserving what we love, cuisine. which is our own cuisine. <laughs> And I would also like to thank um, Dr. Luna um, for organizing this, our Chancellor for this session. Um, you're on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. Um, I think I was not able to turn it on. Um, Maybe I just spend a few um, minutes again to thank everyone. So um, good morning to the CCA community. I would like to thank Ms. Melanie Narciso for bringing new life to our cuisine and for highlighting the importance of um, conserving its tradition. I couldn't agree more that um, the memory that is clo so closely related to food. In fact, my favorite comfort food is adobo. And for me, the best adobo is the one that's the recipe of my Lola that's cooked by my mom. So it's um, very garlicky, it's somewhat dry, it's made of chicken, pork, and beef, and it has less soy but more um, vinegar. So um, the memory that I would relate to that is um, seeing her every Sunday cook a big pot and then she would pack them in select cans for us to take home. And I really treasure my Lola's handwritten recipes. In fact, I have them with me and um, I hope to give it to my daughters when eventually they also get married. And um, so, um, with this webinar, it made me very nostalgic and reminded me that as a culinary school, we have a big role to play in conserving our love for our own cuisine. I would like to thank Dr. Tawi Luna, um, Jessica Cristobal, the CCA Manila team for organizing this um, first webinar. I would also like to thank our um, beloved CCA alumni, Chef Kerwin, Chef Sandra, Chef Tristan, Chef Jay and Kim Prieto, Chef OJ, for taking part in this in today's webinar. I hope you were inspired as much as I was. Um, and thank you so much for being with us this morning. And I hope to see you in our future events. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Baji. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Baji. It's always a pleasure to hear you speak. <laughs> So, uh, and it, 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 food really connects all of us because your story about the adobo is the, the, the story I have with my, my grandparents as well. Thank you very much. And again, to uh, may I invite the audience, if you haven't followed CCA Manila yet, please uh, follow CCA Manila on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to CCA Manila's YouTube channel. Yes, we have they have a YouTube channel to learn more about uh, uh, CCA, Manila's, CCA Manila and its uh, 
program offerings or if you want to be updated or posted on upcoming events and if you want to do a collaboration with uh, CCA Manila as well. See, Chef, we also have my podcast. It's a secret sauce. See, Chef Sandra oh, wants yeah. to be a guest there, though, Miss Bea. <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for our next webinar, we would like to invite the audience to attend. Um, it's going to be International Chefs Day. This will be on October 29. So it's something that's going to be really interesting as well. It's going to be on a Friday at 3 p.m. Hopefully, everyone can join. So the registration link is in the chat box. Um, hope to see you there. Uh, once again, uh, on behalf of CCA Manila, we would like to thank everyone for taking time to attend our very first webinar on Filipino culinary traditions. And we hope that through this virtual event, we've learned the importance of documenting Filipino culinary traditions in promoting diet, diversif diversification, nutrition, and health. Again, I'm Chef Sandra Pauco. Uh, and I'm Chef Karin Fontanilla. Hello, Dao Chef Jasper. Hi, Chef. <laughs> Stay safe and have a great day ahead. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. God bless. See you. Chef Trisha, hello. CCA faculty, Chef Miguel. <laughs> Chef Ann. Chef Ma Ann. We miss you guys. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Chef Kerwin. Hello. Binati mo ba ako, Paps? Oo oh, naman, ikaw pa ba? Hindi <laughs> ka na makalimutan. Photo up lang po with uh, Miss Melanie. Kasi wala na si Miss Melanie. Wala na si Miss Melanie. Andito pa po ako. Ay, andito pa siya. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> nga po alam ko nga, hindi nga ako alam ko aalis ako hindi. <laughs> But I wanted to say hi of course and thank you virtually. I mean
Paano ba yun? Nice. Seeing you. <laughs> nice presentation, Miss Mela. Miss Mela, thank yeah. you. Very interesting. Ang dami namin natutunan, Miss Mela. Thank you, Miss Mela. Thank you. Salamat din po. Thank you for your very kind words. I'm going to talk about this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Magandang Wait. pag-usapan yan talaga among chefs. No? Nakakaanting puso. <laughs> It really touches the soul. No? Kaka-guilty minsan. <laughs> Ang dami pang kailangan gawin. Nag-guilty ka ba, Chef Kerwin? Opo, actually. <laughs> yung ano nga sabi ko nga, like some of the dishes, um, we do, we cannot help it. Sometimes we do whitewashing with the dishes already. Minsan talaga, you know, para, para ma-accept ng mga ibang people from other countries, we have to whitewash them a little bit. But yun nga, eh, parang nakaka-guilty talaga. <laughs> So really, we have to stick to, you know, what's really traditional and authentic. But salamat talaga, Mikhailay. Thank you, Dr. also for, for organizing this. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Melay. Ano lang to? This is just a springboard, Melay. The project kasi with Chef Jasper. Okay po, photo up po muna tayo sa uh, Chef Sandra, Chef Berwin, Miss Melay, and si si ATM. Wala na si Miss Baji. I'm here. Dito pa si Hi, Hi Chef, Chef Jasper. Hello po. Dinati kita kanina. Dinati mo ba ako nga? Narinig ko nga eh. Buti siya. Okay, kung ikaw, ikaw nag-MC, batiin mo din ako dapat. Oo. Oh. <laughs> Takas <laughs> patlay talaga video ko. Grabe naman. Oh, I see. Wait lang, picture about, taking. Uh, Jess, I see some 56 uh, participants. Yes, still. po, Dr. Luna. May may we request you to uh, turn on your okay. camera so that you can join us in the photo shoot? Oh, yeah. Baka kasi na-live yung gadget. Ayan, no? There are 53 people. Yes, he... Ayan. Ayan. Hi, Jess. Guys, you may want to turn on your video. And... Nema, Jessica, please. Okay. Okay po. Ipat ko lang si Dr. Pina. Nasa second page siya. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, picture po tayo. One, two, smile. Okay, isa pa po. One, two, smile. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Participants. Thank you, everyone. With, may bago pa ng career, okay. Chef Sandra and Chef Kerr. Sing. <laughs> so, thank you. 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 Yung talk na to should also impinge on the other industries because you've already spoken with nutritionist dietitians, not so how to bring sentimentalities and Filipino cuisine to diets. In special diets, no, we should stop prescribing uh, ano ba yan, mga quinoa, kung ano, anong mga foreign Correct. foods. No? Correct. It's really Filipino food that is the best no, for, for us. So mm-hmm. we should impinge also on the uh, tourism industry, no? Nakikinig kanina si Bell Ochoa. Wala na si Bell dito, eh. And likewise, some faculty members from other oh. universities who are really promoting food. Um, mm-hmm. It's really timely, no? At this time, itong mga chefs natin, ang, kayo ang ano, we, you hold great responsibilities. <laughs> you can destroy mm-hmm. our culture or you can make it. <laughs> kayo talaga ang ano, eh. Ang, uh, responsible bearers. Well, anyway. well, I, I, well, I wanted to say po that uh, I feel bad that I made you feel guilty or maybe I hit some, some <laughs> sensitive nerves siguro sa audience, no? Pero it's a systemic thing, eh. So we we cannot just put our the blame on ourselves kasi ano siya, eh. Problema siya ng buong sistema natin. Yes, yes. That's true. That's true. So congratulations, everybody. 
Congratulations. Thank you, Miss Melay. Maraming salamat, Melay. Thank you. Congratulations. Congrats. Bye po.